Today we remember St. Charles Lwanga and companions, sometimes referred to as the African martyrs. Charles Lwanga himself was put to death for the faith in 1886. So in the church's mind, modern, <laughs> contemporary. Um, and, and you hear that in the language of Pope St. Pa uh, Paul VI, who preached, of course, at the, uh, uh, at the canonization uh, rituals in the 60s uh, for these martyrs. Just recognizing that martyrdom still exists in our own day. It's not just something of the ancient church. And still in our contemporary days, 2020, uh, people's lives are at risk for living the faith where there is a st very strong religious intolerance. In Charles Luanga's life, he was one of many pages to this tyrant of a king in Uganda. Uh, and Christianity was just starting to grow. In fact, the, the church in Africa, it's really an amazing story of rapid growth, like a wildfire. It's, it's quite profound. And he was at the early stages of that conversion process. Well, they also were pages of a tyrant king who had, uh, uh, I don't know if there's a, good way to put this, but cruel uh, uh, desires and, and sexual uh, uh, desires for his pages, you know, so it's really, uh, many of them were children, uh, sexual abuse of them, and Charles Lawanga had been mentored by uh, a Christian before him who protected the pages and condemned the king for his actions, but this king had absolute and vicious power and used it in a cruel way. So he uh, put that uh, Charles mentor to death. And then Charles Luanga was left in charge of the pages, and he was a, quite a young man, but they were ages 13 to 30. And he kept protecting them and ended up imprisoned. And, uh, but he, he uh, kept saying that it was his faith, you know, basically honoring the dignity of every person and, and uh, refusing to engage in the sexual practices the king demanded. So he suffered a martyrdom, but it brought attention to Christianity and people in this new movement who are willing to give their lives for their faith in Christ. It inspired people. And as was said in the early church, the, the, the foundation of the church was, the, the seeds of it was the blood of the martyrs. So there was a, a growth that happened because of such inspiration of these courageous people. So, so we honor him today. In fact, uh, Father Charles, Father Chuck Wood, who served here for a long time, uh, he claimed St. Charles Lawanga as his patron saint. Timothy, the second letter to Timothy. Paul writes these two letters advising him on his ministry. Timothy eventually became the bishop of Ephesus until his eventual martyrdom, Timothy's martyrdom. But he uh, was, was someone that C Paul had coached along the way. Uh, Paul had been involved in the missionary journeys, and I believe it was his second journey back through Lystra, and he, he heard about this young man who was on fire for the faith, and his mother and grandmother were Christians, had mentored him. His father was Greek and pagan, but he, Timothy, had embraced the faith and also had a charisma, natural charisma about him. And, you know, that's a gift, is to be able to identify future leadership. Paul saw that in Timothy and took him under his wing and, and then took him on the missionary journeys and mentored him so that Timothy also became a great pastor. But I love these letters because they are an older, wiser pastor <laughs> passing on information or ideas or uh, ways of management uh, to, to this younger one. In fact, when I was called to be a pastor for the first time. I'd been an associate pastor at places. 
and also was a director of vocations. But now I was going to be asked to lead a parish myself. I happened to be in Israel, and a fax came from the archdiocese to the hotel that I'd been appointed pastor of a given parish. And I thought, gosh, here I am at the Sea of Galilee. I went down to the water, put my feet in the water, and took the two letters of Timothy and just read them for advice from St. Paul. That was, that was a memorable moment. But, but it, it makes us think, who has mentored you? Who took an interest in you and helped you to understand who you're meant to be in your particular walk of life? And then who are you being called to mentor, to be an example for? You know, our children seem to be the most obvious example. Our parents, uh, that's a natural connection. But, uh, but there are other aspects of our lives. And I'm certainly grateful for people in my life, but I also want to be mindful, well, who might be observing me inadvertently, whether I know it or not? Am I living in such a way that my life you know, and I speak for all of us. I mean, this is a good question for any of us to ask. Am I living in such a way that my life is a mentoring example? St. Paul asks Timothy, uh, to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of hands. I think that stirring into flame is an important notion because sometimes we can let our faith become kind of stagnant or habitual. I don't think that happens so much during these days of coronavirus because we have to far more consciously live our faith. But, but still, we have to continually agitate it, stir it into flame because that forces us to keep learning. And for what? That, because God did not get us, but rather... Power, love, and control. It's been translated a, a few different ways. Power and self-control. Or that we might be strong, loving, and wise. I like that too. Strong, loving, and wise. So we're called to live that so that our lives, and sometimes even consciously in a relationship, we're called to be a witness, an example of the faith, and it does take courage. I mean, Timothy put his life on the line that we might uh, stand for Christ and stand for the values that Christ places in our hearts, you know, honoring the dignity of every person, to, to respect, to be good citizens to, of the kingdom as well as this earth. So I, I think it's just important for us to be mindful of that. Who passed the faith on to me? Who passed the values, the principles by which I live on to me? And who am I? passing those on to. Whether I'm conscious of it or aware of it or not, am I being a living witness to the faith?